uh, the question has come up again of why you had left the band. And uh, as we mentioned before we turn on the recorder, um, you, you're gradually providing a further and further insights to this without, uh, I guess, starting a, a war of words. And from what I'm starting to gather is, is there ultimately it was a bit of a split between yourself and the other guitarist, Glenn tipped into sort of where it reached a point where you felt that you had just had enough and decided to walk away. Is, is that fair to sort of say, I guess, what was the crux uh, of the argument uh, at the point in time? Yeah, there was, there was no particular argument as such. Um, like, like I say, the parts to the book is pretty cool. I say I started at the beginning telling the story of me as a young lad, but basically we were there. No hope of uh, doing anything, I think, really. But I cut free and became a free spirit at the age of 15, and uh, and I found music. And, you know, like I say, I wanted to tell that story, the transition into, and also how metal was made. And, and I get into kind of uh, a lot of stuff that the fans, I'm sure, would like to know about, really. Um, a little bit inside look at Judas Priest and how it all happened and worked and the fun bits and the... And the not so fun bits and everything, and and as you say later on, I kind of because it's it's not one kind of quick fix. This is what happened. You know, we had an argument one day, and so I jumped ship. It was it was kind of uh, over a long, long, lengthy period of time because you know relationships, you know, can get strained, can't they? You know, whether it's uh, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, so you know, uh, at work, at school, you know, it's it's tough to. It's tough to be um, to- in total harmony. Um, I think it's etched in stone, isn't it? I mean, uh, Doc and have just got back together after 20 years. That's right, years, you know, yeah. Ax- Axel Rose leaves every week or something <laughs> and comes back. You know, Rob left the band for 14 years and came back. And, you know, it is, you know, somebody has a wobble and, uh, you know, and machine heads, they've just gone, oh, that's it. You know, yeah, a cu- couple of them are leaving anymore. now as well. Phil Demmel's leaving, that's right, yes. So, but that'll get fixed again, I mean, you know, but like I say, and all the fans are going, no, you can't do this. The band is perfect as it is. You guys have just got to hug and kiss up, kiss, you know. And um, and I think that's what happened to me, you know. I was a big Hendrix fan, and when Hendrix said, that's it, Noel Reddy, Mitch Mitchell, you're out, I'm moving on. I'm going, oh, no, no, you can't. This I've bought into this. This is really, you know, what you know, um, you guys are my heroes, you know, not just one person, but it's the band, you know, that because I am a music fan, it's the band, it's the band name and what the band stands for, you know. Um you know, and um and, and that um that um is just something that's like undeniable and um and has to go on and um and so it was a, a long series of things that, that that happen you know that go forward and um and you have to uh just go with it and uh, you know if i can put it in a nutshell i mean um a band is a collection of several guys and no one, <laughs> you quickly learn that no no two people on the planet are the same yes. you know everybody's everybody's so eclectic um and so you have guys with you know uh, a bit stronger minded but kind of stronger characters other guys more placid more tolerant you know um you get you know but in the early days you know um there's no spoils to split up. You know, you're all there in the trenches. Um, you're all equal. There is no money. There is no fame. No success. You've got nothing to. Def- you've got nothing to. You know, want to grab an extra piece of. Um, but eventually, you know, you climb the ladder. You know, uh, you start to get bigger. You know, more successful. And um, I think it's fair to say, you know, it wasn't a bad situation in Judas Priest. I mean, we we. We stood the test of time much longer than a lot of other bands, so it wasn't that bad. But it, it wasn't without, you know, um, you know, um, the inevitable pecking order arises, and uh, you've got the, um, you know, certain, you know, egos, whether whether they're obvious or not. You know, things happen, you know, and you you start to have an awareness of that, and and you go with it. Some people go with it. I mean, you know. Um, and, um, but, you know, after a long, long period of time, 
you know, it's not so bad. Like say when you are riding the crest of a wave and it, and it, and it's all good and you're flying around, you you kept so busy. But after kind of uh, forty years, you know, um, and things seem to be kind of slowing down and not quite what they were. You know, it becomes a lot a uh, lot harder. Certain things become a lot harder to uh, tolerate, and you know, um, and, and and they start to magnify themselves a little bit. You know. And, and and I think I do square it up in the book that probably nobody's fault in particular because everybody, as, Fra- as Frankie says, everybody does it kind of their way. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> so it's not it's not for me to say, hey, you can't, you know, you can't do this on stage or you can't do this before you go on because it's rock and roll, you know. But um, if it didn't suit me uh, at a certain time, you know, um, as I said before. Lots of band members make decisions, whether they're snap decisions, regrettable decisions, or whatever it is. Certain points, it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back at the time, and that's kind of what happens, really, Jeff. <laughs> 